Hi, my name is Antoinette Yvette Carr. What about stigma? It is a thing of my past. I'm finally out of my Pandora's box. I'm not hearing too much about stigma. And being HIV positive, the only thing I know is for those who are scared of saying they're living with the virus, those are the ones that hide in their hands. I am proud to say that I feel good in the skin I am, and I'm with a group of women that give me love and support, and we are the STS ambassadors stop the silence. These group of women helped me come a long ways. I hidden in that box for a very long time. Now I feel life is a beginning. I'm living life by my choices I make. I am proud to say that stigma is no more hindering my life. I am proud of the woman I done became since I came out of that Pandora box. So goodbye stigma. It doesn't mean a thing over here. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brian C. Jones from Cleveland, Ohio, and I've been thriving with the diagnosis for 42 years. I only began to thrive when I began to confront my fears head on. This is Diva Pearl Jones. And remember, dog spelled backwards is God, and that has helped me thrive, living with HIV and AIDS. Love you, Stigma Conference. sellers and to answer the question how is sharing my diagnosis been helpful it's been extremely helpful to those who are uninformed or uneducated about HIV and AIDS I do a program in the correctional facility a 12-week life skills program and probably about week five or six I start to share my diagnosis and it sort of changes the entire atmosphere people who are uneducated are educated I see a lot of empathy and compassion I also see a lot of um increased knowledge because they are surprised that someone with HIV defies the stereotypes of what they think HIV looks like uh, 30 years with lived experiences. I think that's very um, instrumental as well as when I uh, share my information in the community, in the faith-based community, in different sessions and seminars. So it's extremely helpful and it's something that I'll continue to do. Hi everyone, my name is William Matobu common known as the U equals U guy and I reside here in Uganda. I would like to share my thoughts on how stigma has changed over the years. Over the past decade, um, stigma around HIV has definitely reduced um, thanks to the messages like U equals U, that means undetectable equals untransmittable. This shows that people living with HIV who maintain undetectable by load they cannot transmit the virus to others. This message has really empowered many people, including myself, to live openly without fear. However, while progress has really been made, stigma still exists in certain communities, especially in areas where education and awareness remain low. This shows that we need to keep pushing for more inclusive conversations 
about HIV to ensure that stigma continues to fade. Thank you for listening. Be blessed. Hello, my name is Gracie from Kampala, Uganda. I can answer question one. Um, how has stigma changed over the, over the years? Um, as far as HIV is concerned, for my case um, and my country, people that are infected with HIV right now look amazing. They look so much healthy. They are able to even have families with people that are not infected because there are various ways doctors actually can go about it. And they're able to move on with their lives and their careers, you know going to work in their offices um you know sports and all that and it's something that's just amazing and also their lifespan is now a bit longer than it was in the years growing up because growing up when you had hiv in my village people would actually isolate you because of the physical changes in your body um loss of weight um loss of hair it was just so vivid uh, there's a certain color that would come on your skin and you'd have these freckles and all that so people would just you know ignore you and all that so that's all i can uh, i can explain it right now people look amazing and there's a longer lifespan because of the changes in the medicine i believe yeah thank you so much my name is idia to ngalo a sickle cell advocate and a leading founder of the green beach sickle sierra leone sharing my diagnosis as a sickle cell patient has helped me greatly to have a community wherein they will know what to do whenever i have an emergency i believe that sharing a sickle cell story will help the, the young ones to also know what to do and how to manage their condition irrespective of what society says about being a sickle cell a sickle cell is not a death sentence when speaking up or communicating about your condition will help you and help others that are around you to know exactly how to treat you and what medication to give you whenever you are having a crisis. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Otim, a young person living with HIV. Stigma is the reason I'm here to talk to you today about. Over the years, it has been something that has affected many young people or even people older and living with HIV. You are diagnosed with HIV, you just get to learn that you're living with HIV, you face the difficulty with accepting that you're living with HIV because of stigma. But now it has changed because of the things that we've put in place, including uh, health education, treatment literacy, and combating of myth. Should you be struggling with stigma, we have vast information available out there. But people like me, to show you light that it's possible to live with HIV and overcome stigma. It's possible for you to live a healthy life even with HIV. And stigma shouldn't be the case of these present days even up to now. So yes, it is possible to eradicate stigma and end it. Not like those days, but in the current days. Thank you and I love you all. I'm talking about yeah! Hello, hello everyone. My name is Ms. Deborah Davis and I've been HIV positive for 16 years. There's a lot of stigma, stigma going on about HIV. And I would like to just clear it up. There's a thing called language matters and language does matters. It should matter to the whole world. If you need any help with language matters or 
understanding HIV, you can get in contact with PPN or STS. It's, you can look on WhatsApp or you can Google it. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. My name is Tanya. I'm talking to you about stigma. Stigma doesn't bother me anymore. Uh, I think we have so many things out there now to make people aware and not judge like they used to back in the day. But now all's well, and I love telling people my story. HIV positive. Thank you. I'll let you get back to work. I'll see you.
name is Zulaika Nanyonga from Uganda. Stigma is less in the past because this is what I feel drives the change. We look at increased awareness and education. People have exposure to information whereby people share stories to challenge stereotypes and misconceptions. We look at social media. This has been a game changer for platforms, amplify voices and facilitate open discussions. We look at the Twitter spaces that is famously now known as the X spaces. And that is what I feel drives the change. Hello, my name is Asima Hajara from Uganda. Stigma is still an issue in Uganda because of disclosure. For instance, when you HIV and you disclose your status for your loved ones or your partner, it becomes an issue when they reject you, when they stigmatize you more, when they give you sympathy down. Usually that's what we get. But when we work as a collective, when we work together as a community and provide information, start sensitizing and uh, creating awareness, we can overcome stigma of all critical diseases. Otherwise, I, I hope to see you guys at the Stigma Conference virtually. Let us make friends, let us make connections, let us learn, let us implement everything that we learn at the conference. See you there. Ta the monster is me. So you look at me with looks of disgust and condemnation, with a tongue that speaks of sympathy, pity and self-contemplation, yet your eyes scream guilty of the loath and deepest towards me. Echoes of your whispers reverberating all around me, how can I be this dirty? How I put my health at stake, traded my dignity, I lost my morality, and now I am stained with this impurity. Your accusing eyes can only see a walking symbol of infidelity, not the strong being I used to be. So the monster is me for popping pill after pill, morning after morning. The monster is me, not the disease that is slowly snatching my livelihood from me. Pointing condemning fingers at the clinic, as in the queue I stand, waiting in line to pick the dose that has become a daily reminder. The monster is me, so I do not deserve any form of love and I should never wish to have peace, serenity, but I have come to terms. I have accepted the reality of the monster that I have become. I am to blame for all the shame and pain, this taint that runs in my veins, leaving behind the scar that calls me by name. The monster is me. And I don't know if it gives you the right to shun me in broad daylight. Tell your sons to avoid this anomaly that I am so their children do not become this monster like they won't be mine to. But maybe it is true. The monster is me for carrying this virus. The monster is me for being infectious, however much not airborne. The monster is me for having it passed to me when I was born or from the transfusion, the intercourse. The monster is me like I chose this, of course. The monster is me, says the voice that screams at the back of my head, the screech scratching the pit of my throat, so I say it loud. The monster is me, and I have accepted that. But I have one last wish. If this unborn child of mine, this little one in my belly, happens to have fallen in the pit of the filth and stench that stained and dainted me, please let him know he is not to blame. Let Ha, no, this is not her fault. He, she is not the monster, but I am. I am the monster is me.
Beyond the Red is it's just powerful. It's a bop uh, for people. And so people can really get lost in the music, but at the same time, the messaging is so strong. And so the takeaway I want is that there is a life after diagnosis. And listen, we don't have to stop at an HIV diagnosis. There's life after divorce. There's life after cancer. There's life after hurt. There's life after pain. There is life. You know, you can live beyond it. So maybe your red is HIV. Maybe your red is, you know, um, a divorce. Maybe your red is something else. Whatever challenges there are in your life, you know, that's the red I'm talking about and that you can live beyond it. And so I want people to take away from this project, you know, um, an empowering message that I could live beyond this. This is not my end. And so that's really, you know, what the song is created for, just to give people a reference to be able to say, I'm gonna rise above this, you know? You know, the first thought that came to mind after getting a diagnosis was life was over. The thought never came to my mind that this was the beginning of something far greater. It 
was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. It was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. No, it was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. It was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. Here we go. Pain, power, problems, purpose, delay. Never that is always something greater for your life. Be encouraged, storms only make you stronger. This was all in the plan. I was picked by the creator. Here we go. Greater is he that's in me. You can't stop me, he sent me. A diagnosis can't bit me. Look at me, I'm still standing. Might as well get with me. Stigma ain't gon' block me. Fit on neck, cause I'm cocky. Judging me is so petty. It was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. It was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. No, it was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. It was the beginning, but I thought it was the end. <laughs> Man, this is crazy. <laughs> I thought I had nothing else to give, like I was damaged goods. But the pain became my power, and the problem became my purpose to solve. Pain, power, problems, purpose, delay. Never there is always something greater for your life. Be encouraged, storms only make you stronger. This was all in the plan. I was picked by the creator. Listen, HIV wasn't my first diagnosis, and what I realized is much like you, Purpose is our first diagnosis. You still have so much to offer. Humanity has a need that only you can fill. You are creation. You are truth. You are power. You are destiny. You are existence. You are amazing. And you are worthy. Greater is he that's in me. In me. You can't stop me, he's sick me. A diagnosis can't bit me. Look at me, I'm still standing. Might as well get with me. Stigma ain't gon' block me. Fit on neck, cause I'm cocky. Judging me is so petty. Greater is he that's in me. In me. You can't stop me, he's sick me. A diagnosis can't bit me. Look at me, I'm still standing. Might as well get with me. Stigma ain't gon' block me. Fit on neck, cause I'm cocky. Judging me is so petty. It's not the end. It's not the end for me. It's not the end. It's not the end for me. It's not the end. It's not the end for me. It's not the end. It's not the end for me.
Let's go. I'm Dr. Mark Allendary, and I'm an infectious diseases doctor and epidemiologist. And I'm Doc Griggs, and I'm a community health specialist. On this episode of Noise Filter, we're talking about PrEP. Well, I'm well prepped for today's podcast. Did you know that PrEP stands for pre-exposure prophylaxis? It's an amazing tool to prevent HIV. Boys, boys, settle down and let mother explain it. Milan Nicole Cherry? Let's go inside the body of someone without HIV. Any volunteers? Ooh, ooh, ooh. 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 Me, me, Milan. Me, me. He loves me. He loves me not. He, <laughs> actually, everyone loves me. Let's do you. Now check out your strong CD4 cells. They don't look that strong. CD4 cells are like an orchestra conductor, directing the immune system to make antibodies. Oh, uh uh-uh. Looks like HIV is trying to break in. Well, it's a good thing you're on PrEP. Just like how birth control prevents pregnancy, taking a PrEP pill daily prevents you from getting HIV. PrEP is like a force field. If HIV enters the body, it targets it and wipes it out. When used daily, PrEP is 99% effective at blocking HIV. This is why you should get tested for HIV. If you're negative, you can prevent contracting HIV with PrEP. If you're HIV positive, you can stop the transmission of HIV with HIV medication. Remember, my babies, undetectable equals untransmittable. Wait, I didn't know we were in a band. How did that happen? It's a cartoon, dude. (laughs) Just go with it. 